So today's drawer is going to be done using a Japanese saw and we're going to cut it tails first instead of pins first like on the other video. Now this one here happens to be the second drawer. So this is the drawer just below the one that we did for the pins first video. These are going to be the boards for the side. So you can see they already have their groove in the bottom like we've grooved all of this. This is going to be the front section in mahogany. It also has the groove in it. And this board here is the back. And you can see there is no groove because we've actually cut it shorter because we want the panel to be able to slide out underneath the back, in the back. So that was all part of the drawer anatomy section on our very first video. Now that's important when we're doing the layout, of course, because when we're laying out the pins and tails on these sideboards, of course, on the one side, the side that mates to the front, we're going to be laying out the tails all the way across the full width of this board, of this sideboard. However, when we get to the part for the top, we're going to be having to allot for room for that bottom section that's missing. So in a way, the half pin is going to be scooted up a little bit. But we'll see that when we go through this process. So the maple sides are going to be attaching to the back and the front. So these are both going to be having the thickness of the maple scribed onto them. And these boards here are going to be pin boards. So they only get the scribing done on the surfaces, not on the side edges. Now for the sides, one portion, the portion that's in the back, is going to be scribed to the thickness of the maple as well. So if we take a look at this, I'm going to just decide arbitrarily that this is going to be the back. So let me scribe that. Now this is the front section. This is going to have the mahogany mating to it, so we're going to scribe it with the thickness of the mahogany. Now I'm doing the tails first. We're going to be taking the side pieces, which are the ones that have the tails. This part here is the back. The back is going to end up joining up here. So we're going to need to allot for a half pin right here above the groove, and then another half pin on this side here, and then lay out the tails in between. But one of the advantages of doing tails first is that your cuts are all going straight perpendicular to these surfaces. So in that sense, it doesn't matter if you had two boards in place. So with the tails first, we could actually cut the tails simultaneously on both of these boards. Now in the case of a drawer, you're going to want to make sure that this, these sides here are both for the back and the other side is both for the front because of the way the layout is different. And we're just going to eyeball the angle. And then we'll leave uh, this little half pin. We're going to leave one of approximately the same dimensions up here. Again, eyeballing the angle. So now we can do the layout of the tails in between. If we go for three tails, we could have a tail here, a tail here, and a tail here. Now certainly if you're doing something like a blanket chest, you're going to want to lay out these tails. Maybe, you know, putting the centers and then doing the cuts on either side. The angles you could pretty much eyeball if you're reasonably accurate. If there's a little bit of a variation, well that's what we all call character on these chests. But for a small drawer like this where I'm just going to be laying out the three tails, it's pretty easy to eyeball even if I was going up to four. For this one I'm going to stick to three because I have some reasons for the other drawers and we'll see those in some other videos. So now let's cut the other side of this tail. Then we'll make an equal size tail up here. And now we can place a tail here right in the middle. So you can almost do it by eye. You can put your, put your blade here in the middle and then scoot over half a tail. There we go. So now we've placed our tails. Now we can go ahead and we can clean this out using a fret saw. And if we wanted to mark this, since we're keeping tails, we're going to be cutting off these half pins. We're going to be doing that with the saw later. And then we're going to cut off these pins. Then these pins. 
And then these pins down here, because this is the back and this back piece will join down to here, I'm tempted to just cut straight vertically here so that this board will be nested in there and that'll go all the way to the back. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's just cut that right now. So now this becomes removed and we are gonna keep that. It's not really a tail, but we're keeping it. Well, let's cut that out. Again, we're gonna go for chiseling this, so I wanna leave a little bit of material there because it makes it easier to chisel. If you're trying to just go off the edge, it's too easy to lose your, your point with the chisel. Now we can eliminate this one here by using a saw. Now, this happens to be the back. So one thing I'm gonna mention is that I just flip this to its cross-cut side, bring this up to the side, and cut it off. I mean, if you're doing it on the front, and I would definitely, if I'm doing it on the front, I'm gonna put this sideways so I can really get a good cut. But up here, if there's a small little tiny issue in the back, nobody's gonna see it. So just for fun, I'm gonna do it that way for this since we are doing the back. So use the cross-cut side of the Roba. Now while you can finesse a little bit if you're on the line, you really want to try cutting that one right on the line. So now we've got our back ones done. So now we're going to go ahead and chisel out this, the waist. Let's pop this in the vise. Get it to the same height as this. Sometimes works out a little bit better when you have two pieces of stock push up onto the second piece. There we go. This side here is labeled as the bottom, so the groove needs to be to the outside of that part there. So we're just gonna take this now, flip this down. I do find that doing this setup on tails first is a pain. It's a little pokey. And describe with a pencil. So now if I back this off, you can see where the tails are. If you want, just mark that. So we've got an X there, X, and X. That's where the sockets are gonna be. We're gonna cut on the inside of the line. So you can see where I marked it. There's an X here for the tail, tail, tail. So these are the waist. And we're gonna cut to the inside of the line because the, the line is actually visible. So it needs to remain there. So let's cut. To the inside of the line. So if I were to do this one here, just so it's a little easier on the camera. You can see that there's the line. It's just gonna get right up to the edge of that. And that's where I'd be cutting. Okay, go all the way through these. Now we're gonna clear out the waste. I have a garbage can over there that's getting literally loaded with pins. Chisel at home. There we go. So the black is actually some of the pencil line. <laughs> I'm looking at a little monitor here and it looks worse than in person. You get a little bit of glue on that, it's gonna slide in together nicely. I'll get a little bit more pressure down here. That'll close that little gap that's on the bottom of this one. If I tap it in, it goes away. So these will glue up nicely. Now I'm gonna move on to the mahogany. What I'm gonna need is that when I have this on the front, I don't mind seeing this groove sticking out through the front because there's gonna be an applied front, but I do not wanna see this groove on the side. So that means there needs to be a tail right where this groove is in order for this board to cover up that hole. I need to make this tail angle down 
and I need to not reveal any of that groove. So I need to know how much further over I need to go so that when I do the cut, I'm not going to be causing any problems. Now, one way to do this, and I'll put it on the side that you're going to be able to see, is you can just take a little square here. I can line it up right where that groove is. And I'll just draw a line down to that scribe line. Now I'll do one on my side because I'll be cutting from this side actually. So now I'm going to be trying to make my cut to angle down to this, either meet this corner or be just on the inside of this corner here so that I don't reveal any of this with the tail. So let me go out here and give myself a little bit of room so I can come down and... Now we can go up here, leave about the same size half tail, a uh, half pin. Now we can go here and create our tail. Of course, this is our minimum size right here. We're going down at a shallow angle so that we can completely get rid of this groove. Of course, if we wanted to, we can make a tail this big, but we're just gonna hug it very close to where that groove already is. Then we're gonna go up here, make one of about the same size. So now I have one, two, I'm gonna wanna put at least two more in here. Approximately the same size tail. Now if we want to mark the waist, just because it's easier for you to also see on the camera, the, slot, the socket for the pin on the side, that one on the side, we got a tail, pin, tail, pin, tail, pin. So now let me remove that with the fret saw. Now this is on the front, so I'm not going to cut this by just cutting sideways. Yeah, I could, but I'd rather not have to go back in and pair it in case there's some small things. So I'm going to take this. Now in all honesty, for me cutting this off, I prefer it be on this side. The reason being is I'm a right-handed saw, and this way here I'm going to see the line I'm trying to leave on the right side of the saw, and I'll be cutting on the waist over here. For me, it's easier to visualize if it's better for you the other way. Then go for it. Now we clean the waste. Now it's time to scribe this onto what's the pin board, which is going to be the front. So let me put this facing you. I'll lower this down. Do that little trick there where I put one on top. There's only a hundred ways to do this transcribing, so pick the one that you like. Now, i got to make sure we get this right. Now, this part right down here is the bottom. You can tell because there's a tail where there's the groove, whereas here there is not. So this is your front. Go ahead and place that on top of the board. Now that I've marked those, if I back this off, you can see where the tails are. So obviously we're going to be cutting this way to make a socket, wherever these tails have been. Okay? And we cut on the inside of the line, because the lines need to be visible. They were visible inside this socket before, they need to be visible after the socket is cut. Now we can cut. There we go. And after cutting the hard maple, this is a joy to cut the soft mahogany. Now we're going to fret saw away the waste. Now to chisel it out.
right, the fit looks pretty good on these. Fortunately, the groove still lines up. That's always a good thing. You can see the groove appears to the front. This is gonna be covered. You know, the pins and the tails actually project fairly, fairly far, a little farther probably than I needed to. But uh, this one here needs a little bit of clamping down the middle, but when I press down on it, closes up the gap very nicely. So between uh, clamping and glue, we're gonna be fine on these.